He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. You want life eternal? You need Jesus Christ. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. God is reminding us, maybe you have forgotten or you doubt. But these things I have written to you who believe in the name of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the assurance of salvation in your Son, Jesus Christ. Now as we open your word, we ask that you open our hearts to the calling of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The work of the Holy Spirit, the main objective of the Holy Spirit is for us to have a deeper, a deeper relationship with Him. Deeper relationship with Christ. And the devil does anything so that we will have a shallow religion, a surface religion, not a deep, deep relationship with Jesus Christ. And I want you to have the type of relationship with God that you know that you know that if Jesus were to come tomorrow, you would be saved. That you know, as Paul says, that you can say, as he says, I know in, wh in whom I believe and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him. I want you, have, I want you to have something real, not a, a superficial or a shallow relationship, but a real relationship with God. Something real, not something conjured up as we looked at last week there in Acts 19. And we're going to be going there again, so you can go there if you like. With the sons of Sceva who had a shallow, they did not have a deep relationship with God. But I want you to, I want us to have a deep relationship with God. So deep that nothing can separate us from the love of, of God. So deep that when we get the, the news of disease or cancer, it doesn't separate us from God. And we get the news of a loss of our job, or get the news or the arrival maybe that our marriage is, is breaking, is coming apart. We do not lose hope or lose faith. Something so real that the storms of life, no matter what they are, we, they will not overtake us because our faith is grounded in Jesus Christ. We need to be able to say like Job. You remember Job? Was stricken with disease, lost his sons, and yet what does he say? I know that my Redeemer lives and that in my flesh I will see the Lord. Amen. He kept his eyes on Jesus. So there, Acts chapter 19, oops, Acts chapter 19, just as the review we saw there from verses 11 and onward, these sons of Sceva that were trying to, to conjure up the Holy Spirit, they liked that Paul was doing miracles and they heard about the miracles of Paul and, and they wanted to do those exact same things. In there, in verse 13, it says, These same, then some of the itinerant Jews, exorcists, took it upon themselves to call on the name of Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. See, they had misunderstood that using the name of Jesus is different than having the name of Jesus. There is a big difference. I want to I want to show you just turn to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Here is a, a, a very interesting story. Acts 16:16. 16, 16. There is a difference in just saying the name of Jesus than having Jesus. 
Acts 16, 16, it says, Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of what? Deviation. Is that the Holy Spirit? No. She met us who brought her master much profit by fortune telling. Okay, so now we know what we're dealing with. Okay? Somebody, again, just like these sons of Sceva that were fooling around with sorcery, with evilness. And, no, and notice what the girl was saying. The girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. Is there any false in that statement? Absolutely not. She was, she was telling the truth. And this she did for many days. But Paul greatly, what? <laughs> was annoyed and turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. To come out of her. Just like these sons of Sceva, also this, this girl just, just proclaiming the, the name of Jesus is not the same as having Jesus. So we need to be careful also to just think, well, the song says Jesus, so it must be good. The method of the song or the method of the message has a role to play as well. Has a role to play. There's a, a difference between saying the name of Jesus and actually having Jesus and their relationship, these sons of Sceva, was shallow. Their, their shallow experience with God kept them from having the real power. They did not want to, to be obedient. Our shallow experience, our shallow religion, will keep some of us from entering into the kingdom of heaven if we do not have a deep relationship with God. Because we can pretend to have something or not to have something. But unless we have a deeper relationship with Jesus. I want you to, to look in your bulletin there to, at the meditation, which is the same meditation as last Sabbath. And seen here from the book, The Coming of the Comforter, talking about the Holy Spirit and how... We shouldn't base just on emotions and thrills for the Holy Spirit. It says there, there is danger. Notice, there is danger in looking for some great stir or emotion. Some special revelation of glory. Some unusual gripping sense of majestic presence. Many are looking for what? For physical feeling, joyous thrills and marvelous spiritual shocks which if they do not have, they are disheartened. Notice this next sentence. Really, the filling of the Spirit was not meant to be extraordinary. Right. Amen and amen and amen. The filling of the Holy Spirit was not meant to be extraordinary. Now, can it be? Sure. But it was not meant to be extraordinary. It is a heritage provided as a normal experience for Christians, being filled with the Holy Spirit should be a normal experience for us. We should be filled with the, the Spirit in the morning, in the afternoon, in the car while we're driving with crazy drivers around, at work with your co-workers who may give you a hard time, in the classroom with the students who just you feel like pulling out your hair. Every time we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. It, it should be a normal, as it says here, it is a heritage provided as a normal experience for Christians, daily enabling us to live a holy life and to serve effectively as well as to meet crisis there. See, we don't need or we, we don't receive the Holy Spirit by some special service or special music or special sermon, but we receive the Holy Spirit as we submit our hearts to him personally personally we don't receive the Holy Spirit because we go to a building and and believe that the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out in that building the Holy Spirit may be poured out in that building but he is poured out in that building because people 
personally are submitting their hearts to, to him and surrendering their hearts to him. Revelation 12 verse 9 tells us that Satan will deceive the entire world. And the, and the, and the devil knows that, that many people enjoy or are looking for a thrill. He knows that. And if we're not careful, he can give us a thrill and he can fill us with something that makes us think that we are filled with the Holy Spirit, that we stop seeking the real. We need to be careful because the devil, Satan, can give us a thrill and can fill us with something that we think is the real, that we stop seeking the real. The devil is so smart and rather than, than going against Christianity, he distorts Christianity. He distorts Christianity. And so I just want to say, and I hope you remember these next words, is that there are going to be more people lost because of false religion rather than no religion. You don't believe me? You read the great controversy. Read Revelation chapter 13. There are going, and 17. Read, there are going to be more people lost because of false religion rather than no religion at all. And so the devil is an expert since the very, very beginning there in the Garden of Eden to twist the character of God. To twist the character of God. Join me there in 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to see the, de the deceptions that Satan does and that why people follow them. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7 it says for the ministry of law, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work only he who only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy him with the brightness of his coming the coming here it is the coming of the lawless one. Who is the lawless one? It's Satan. It's, okay. it's the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all powers, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteousness, deceptions among those who perish. Why? Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Many will follow, and notice, not just signs and wonders, lying wonders. There are great signs and great wonders that God can do, absolutely. But the devil can do counterfeit wonders and lying wonders as well. And how can we determine if it's a true power manifestation of God or it's just a lying wonder? Verse 10 says, we need to love the truth and be familiar and know the truth. The devil will use false religions to make people think that they have a real experience in the Lord instead of following the truth. Instead of following the truth. You see, the devil likes people to, 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 to feel good. And that feeling... They, they somehow connected that, that they are, are filled with God. But the Bible tells us that it's just simple things that we can share and know that we are filled with God. Simple things. Simple things like just being nice to somebody else. Being nice to somebody else. Telling the truth all the time. Returning a faithful tithe and an offering. These are basic, simple things. Keeping the Sabbath holy. Keeping the Sabbath day holy, not the two hours that worship is here and then we go home and pretend it's just another week and go shopping and buying and things. No, no, no. Remember the Sabbath day, Jesus says. Not the Sabbath service, but the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Those are simple things. Studying the Bible. 
instead of wanting some sensation or some thrill, as simple as just doing what is right, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the Spirit is the one who leads us to do what's right. And if we are doing what is right, we are being filled and the Spirit is working through us. The Spirit is working through us. And these sons of Sceva didn't want to do what was right. They wanted to, to use the name of Jesus to bless their error. And that is Satan's deception. Using the name of Jesus to bless an error. And we see that today. We see that today. So what is then the role of the Holy Spirit? Well, there are three that I want to just cover today. And we find them there in John chapter 16. John chapter 16. What is really then the role of the Holy Spirit? And next Sabbath, we're going to see exactly, we're going to spend the entire message dealing with the subject of what is speaking in tongues. Does the Seventh-day Adventist Church believe in speaking in tongues? I can tell you right now that yes, we do. We, it's, it's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we'll hit that topic next Sabbath. But here, John 16, verse 13. John 16, verse 13, what is the role of the Holy Spirit? It says, however, Jesus is talking, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all, what? Truth. The first role of the Holy Spirit is to guide you into truth. Whether we like the truth or not, and that, that, that don't matter. He guides us into the truth. He, 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 he's, he's not guiding us to speak in tongues. He wants to, get, he wants to get into our mind first. Not so much into our mouth, but into our minds. He guides us into truth. And then notice there in the same chapter, John 16, but verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is for your advantage, Jesus says, that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. The second thing that he does is convict you of the truth that you have. Is convict us. The Spirit tells us this is a way. And then he says, you're not going in that way. He he tells us and shows us what the truth is and then he tells us, follow the truth. You're not going in that direction. The Spirit also tells us that we should be witnesses to the world. There in Acts 1 verse 8. But I invite you to turn to your Bibles to Matthew 24, 24 because this issue of miracles and signs and wonders and feelings and excitement Jesus was very, is very worried about for his church in, this, in these last days. And in Matthew 24 are the signs of, are the signs of right before the world ends, right before Jesus comes, of what signs we should look for. And there in verse 24, Matthew 24, 24, Jesus himself says, For false Christs and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders. And notice, they're going to be so great so as to deceive, if possible, even the elect. The only way it's not going to deceive you is if you have a deep relationship with God that you can discern. Amen. But if we have, like these sons of Sceva, a surface relationship, that we're not obedient, we're still playing with the devil, but yet we want to call on the name of Jesus and do things. These signs and wonders is going to take us. It's going to just take us. Just how it took these sons of Sceva that the powerful signs and wonders that Paul did, it took them. It took them and so we need to be careful. Jesus' concern for the church is false religion. And the devil is so good at it. The devil is so good at deceiving. 2 Corinthians 11.14 tells us that he can even transform himself into an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11.14, Paul tells us that David, I'm sorry, Paul tells us that 
The devil and his angels can even transform themselves into an angel of light. That's why we don't believe by sight, but by what? By faith. We walk by faith, the Bible says, and not by sight, not by the signs or not by the wonders. And so I just want to appeal. There is nothing wrong with the thrill and getting excited. I don't want to downplay that all the way. It can be exciting and good feeling to know that Jesus loves you. This morning on our way over here to church, we were listening to the Heritage Singers, the song called, Oh Happy Day. I think that's what it's called. If you, heard, if, if you heard that song, if you heard it before, it's a happy song. There's no way you can just stay all bloomy in that song. It's a good message, it's a happy song, it makes you feel good. But the point, friends, is that it cannot be the main measurement that we use for our faith. There is a place for, for feelings and excitement and thrills, but it cannot be the main measurement. Just, just, just think of, of the first time you saw the person that you married. Was that like a wow moment? I remember the first time I saw Celie. Uh, she was behind the piano at church. And the piano was facing the other way where I could not see the, the pianist. And the piano wasn't this high, it was a regular floor level. And I, 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 I couldn't see, and, but yet I was attracted to her by something else. That was like, wow, that's nice. I'll, I'll let her answer. What was it that attracted, that was part of my attraction to you? It, why are you turning red? <laughs> what was it? You can say it. Am I lying that I say that I was attracted to your legs? I couldn't see her face, but you, you know, there was no plants or anything covering, I just saw her legs. She was dressed modest, but I could still see her legs. <laughs> and I was, at, at that time, I was looking for someone to start a serious relationship. I was looking for a spouse, and I was determined to marry a musician, and I said, Lord, I want a musician. Give me a musician. And when I saw those nice legs, I said, wow, I got a bonus, a musician and pretty legs. <laughs> And so I said, there must be a pretty face behind it. And praise the Lord, there was. And there is. But friends, you remember. You remember the time where you saw a person that, that you married. There, there was that, wow, wow, he's so handsome. But man, he works out. Oh, look at him. Or she's so beautiful. But what are we going to say after 50 years? <laughs> Age tends to do something. It gives you lines where you don't want lines. <laughs> what are we going to see after 50 years? You see, we cannot, you cannot sustain a marriage just based on the emotions and thrills from when you first met them. You can't. Because the emotions and the thrills don't buy the beans. <laughs> Do they? No. You, sus you stick with them because it is the right thing to do. Because love is based on a principle, not on an emotion. And it's the same way with church. There may be thrills in the service. There may be a song that makes us feel good. But that cannot be the main de de determination of why we come to church. It should not be like, well, who's singing in that church? Oh, I want to go feel good. No, no, no. It should not be the main de determination or the main measurement of why we follow Jesus. There is a place for, for emotions and thrills. But the ultimate proof, you can, you, can, you can turn to our last text, which is in Titus. The ultimate proof that a person has received the Holy Spirit is not a physical phenomenon or emotion, but the reformation of a life. They're in Titus chapter 3. Titus is right after 2 Timothy, the last book 
in the T's in the, in the New Testament. Titus chapter 3. The proof that we have the Holy Spirit is not because of our emotion or physical uh, phenomena, but the reformation of a life, a change in a life. That is the proof that they have received and have the Holy Spirit. There, Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. Verse 1 says, Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak, e to speak evil of no one, to be peaceful, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish. Notice, notice what we were. Foolish disobedience, deceived, serving full various lusts, and pleasures, living in the malice, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But, <laughs> praise the Lord for the but, yeah. but when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works or righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercies he saved us through the washing and the regeneration and renewing of what? The Holy Spirit. It is by the washing of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our lives. Whom, verse 6, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Have, that having been justified by his grace, we should become, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, affirm constantly that it is the washing of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It is the washing of the Holy Spirit in our lives, that we are filled with the Holy Spirit that shows a reformation and a change in our lives. It is not by an emotion that I get that means I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, no. Jesus says by their fruit, you're going to know people. By their actions, you're going to know people. You're going to know whether they're filled with the Holy Spirit or filled with something else. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. So friends, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit you want to receive the Holy Spirit, you don't necessarily have to look for a place where they're building up maybe the service. Just find a quiet place, a quiet place and seek the Lord. Just find a quiet place and seek the Lord. We have to learn to have an experience without props and without emotions and without drums or lights. We need to learn to have it without that stuff. In the last days when when we are on the run we're not going to take any of that with us. Only the relationship that you have between you and the Holy Spirit. So we need to learn to, 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 to have an experience with God without the props. And when the world is stressed, when, when the world today is stressed they normally take a pill to feel better or drink a glass of wine to feel better or watch a movie or hear a song because they want to feel better. But people are always looking for something to substitute for just being filled with Christ. They're looking for a substitution for being filled with Christ. And we want to feel better. Well, let me tell you that I want to feel better too. I want to feel good as well. But the best feeling in the world. What's this message entitled? The best feeling in the world. The best feeling in the world isn't going to come through a great concert, even if it's a Christian concert. It isn't going to come through a great sermon you hear. The best feeling in the world is going to come through a great orchestra as, as beautiful as they are. The best feeling in the world is going to come from having a clear conscience. 
The best feeling in the world is, is going to come knowing that Jesus loves you and has forgiven your sins. The best feeling in the world is knowing that if Jesus comes tomorrow, you will be marching to Zion. Amen. The best feeling in the world is knowing that God has forgiven you. Now, you may not feel like you deserve pardon or you are forgiven, but who cares what you feel? <laughs> Praise the Lord that God's word is true and is a fact. 1 John 1, 9 says, For God is faithful and true and just to forgive us and cleanse us if we confess our sins. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the best feeling in the world. That, that regardless of how I feel, God has forgiven me. God has forgiven my mistakes, my stupidities, my errors. Why? Because His blood covers my sins. And I confess it to Him. And regardless how I feel, He forgives me. And I need to accept and believe that He has forgiven me. That is the best feeling in the world. And you can partake of that feeling. Today as we partake of the bread and the wine, which represents the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, which covers your sins, you can partake of that same feeling of knowing that your sins are forgiven. Just that, just the, that phrase, your sins are forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know what your sins are. You know what your hidden sins are. You know what your sins are that maybe your spouse doesn't even know. Praise God that they're covered in the blood of Jesus. And we start afresh, anew, as they say, a clean slate. And God does not remember them and God does not bring them up again ever anymore. God will not say, well, remember last year. No, no, no. As of today, even this morning's sins will be erased. So after our prayer here today, after I pray right now, please don't go home. You're going to miss the best part of the service, which is this part right here. This is the best part of this service. The best feeling in the world is knowing that you have a Savior and the assurance that God loves you. That's the best feeling in the world. That God accepts you and cleansing you and is preparing a home for you. Do you believe that? Yes. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord God Almighty, I thank you because you have given us feelings and emotions. They come from you. And so, Lord, thank you because we do feel happy at times and sad at times and sorrow but joyful as well. And we are joyful knowing that we have assurance in your Son, Jesus Christ. We are joyful, Lord, because when you could have said no, you didn't and you died for us. Thank you very much for the plan of salvation that we don't deserve, but yet you still offer it to us. And it can be ours, Lord, if we just accept it and take it. So help us to have that best feeling in the world that we have a clear conscience that we are accepted by you and that our salvation is secured in your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.